deal because he's on the plus side of 30, which we know is a thing the Eagles have struggled with. And they're trying to get younger. Here's where I think they don't. I think somebody will give him a little bit more because he played pretty good this year. If he goes, the contingency plan is can we finally move Russell Douglas to safety and stop having him out there at corner? Because that's his natural position at this point. It looks, in his it's, anyway. it's highly likely because I think, you know, what you they saw. They got to get younger somewhere. What, they what you have to saw be yesterday is you got, you got Jalen Mills, mm -hmm. who is also going to be a free agent. As long as Jim Schwartz is the defense coordinator here, he's going to be a starting cornerback. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that <laughs> Maddox. You know, mm -hmm. I said at the beginning of the year, I felt like he earned the right to be a starter on the other side, opposite. You know, um, you got Sid Jones, and then you've got Does Ronald Darby come back. The, the, then Hell you got, no. then you got um, <laughs> LeBlanc is probably their best slot corner guy, mm -hmm. and then Sidney Jones will be there, you know, competing or or backing up. Those are your four corners right now. You still have to get better. You still have to get faster. You know, in the secondary. Um, I think our problem in the secondary right now is a lack of speed and a lack, lack of technical and fundamental skill sets. You know, it's hard to play cornerback in the NFL when you run 4-5 and you're playing against a guy that runs 4-3. Agreed. You know, I mean, that's the problem. That's the problem you saw with DJ Metcalf yesterday. The guy runs 4-3. 4 and, he, and, he, and he's, running, he's running straight down the field. And the defender is standing there yep. that we don't know much about, this Epps kid. Four, seven. He's standing there, mm -hmm. and he's on him right now. Well, now, when you, turn, even, when, you, when you turn to go, okay, it's a foot race. If you run 4-5 and he runs 4-2, it's a wrap. That's the same thing that you see with Rasul Douglas. Yep. You know, he's right there next to the guy, and now all of a sudden they both make the push to take off. And you can see the lack of acceleration, the lack of speed, because it ain't like this. It's like this, right. you know. And in order for them to get better, they've got to get faster on the back end. You've got to have guys, you know, they need a new secondary coach. They need somebody who can come in here and teach these guys the fundamentals and the basic techniques of how you play the game, of uh, how you play the position of cornerback and instill some confidence in them so that they can go out with a little bit of swagger about them and not every single time the ball's in the air, you know, panic and, you know, face guard the guy so, and get a P.I. So then we agree that if you can get McLeod fine, but if not, maybe Russell Douglas to get somebody cheap there and then add a diff additional secondary? You can, you can make that transition, but I, I, don't, I don't know if he can really be that guy at safety. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, well, no, so you try, but I know at safety you can get away with being not as fast as you can in the corner. True, it's more about angles and, and being true. able to read the ball in the air. Whether they decide to keep him or whether they decide to move on or whether they decide to transition um, Douglas to safety, they still need to go out at some point and, Quicker, and, and get another, and, 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 yeah. and get, get, get another, another safety. Okay. Yeah, there's a couple, one, yeah. one guy with some versatility. Yeah. That's why Fins, uh, Minka Fitzpatrick, when he was out there, people were screaming, hey. Why not? That would have been a home run. Oh, my God. Listen, my Dolphins helping you all again, but go ahead. Yeah, and they're, look, they're, they're, they're certainly talented in the draft as well. I don't know if they're going to be able to uh, go, go high league, enough right. to get, you know, Okuda from Ohio State, but he's probably the top cornerback in the draft. He's probably going to go around the five to seven range. Uh, we'll see what they do on the offensive line, though, Seth. I think we can agree Jason Peters won't be here next year. Nope. Uh, Vitae. Not going to be here next year. Uh, well, the Eagles he's... like him more than they should. I think they'll bring him back just because they don't, you know, he's young. He's, he's a talented guy that can kind of play a little bit of both positions. Mm. I don't like him, but he's cheap. What's he going to really cost them to bring back to be a depth guy? Yeah. Sometimes okay. sometimes I think you have to allow guys to go out and set the market for themselves. Let, let, let another team set the market. Unless you just deem that that's a guy that you have to have, then you go ahead and you pay him whatever you think you got to pay him to keep him. But I think a lot of times guys need to go out on the open market and get a reality check about mm -hmm. what they're truly worth. You know, and what then, happened with Ronald Darby? He thought he was going to get big money. He sat out there and waited and waited well, for a one-year deal to come back. But he was hurt, and, and he knew he knew that you know anywhere he went, he was going on a, on a prove it, a right. one-year one prove it. You know, and it was better for him to come back to familiarity to than to go somewhere else and have to learn something else under the auspices of saying, okay, this is a contract year and I got to play well. Well, now he's, he's just thrust himself. His way out. He throw, he thrust himself right back into that all over again. Mm -hmm. But there's no coming back here. No. Here's another question, and it's an important one because we know the history of the quarterback. 
who will be the backup quarterback on this team next year? So this is goes to my point. Teddy Bridgewater sat out there, uh, you know, a little while ago as a free agent quarterback, as a backup who would have been a great backup quarterback, and went back to New Orleans. The Eagles could have got him. They, they didn't. They had Wentz, and they didn't know what they were doing with Foles. They could have went and got Teddy Bridgewater and passed on. Teddy Bridgewater probably won't go back to New Orleans because he's now played well enough where he's going to get a shot somewhere or at least have an opportunity to play behind a quarterback where he's probably going to see field time. Let's be honest. Carson Wentz has been hurt every year of his NFL career. There's a good chance if they bring in Teddy Bridgewater, Teddy Bridgewater knows he's going to play at some point during the season and get a chance to play. If he's out there and you can get him, go get him. Because of the fact that, you know, this is a guy, you say, oh, you know, backups are backups for a reason. He came in and the Saints didn't lose, okay? Mm -hmm. They didn't lose a beat. People counted them out, no shot at making the playoffs, and he played and won every single game he coached as a game manager who made plays when he was needed. He's the perfect complement to this team, a guy that can come in, who's been a starter, who has the ability and the talent to be a starter, but just for whatever reason, injury derailed his career. Now he's a career backup, but he's one of the best backups in football. You don't want to go back and get Foles. He's probably stuck in Jacksonville. You don't want that nightmare again. Well, he's go got get a monster a contract that and you're not that too. Get. Yeah. So you go back and you get a guy like a Teddy Bridgewater. You bring him in on a you know two three year deal. You know you pay him good money and, and let him play. He's not coming here. He's not coming because in Teddy's in Teddy's eyes, he believes that he's a starting quarterback. Where? Um, would, it, it, listen, it doesn't matter. Doesn't it it doesn't, doesn't matter where. Yeah. Well, I understand, okay? but if you, you got to have a team that's going to want to sign you. I get that, but if you believe that you're a starter, you believe that you're a starter. You don't care about where. You know, you, you definitely, you know, he's, you're right, he's in, a, in the unenviable position of being thrust into the role as a backup quarterback. Okay, the only way he's going to see the field again is if he's, if he's with an organization, a guy gets hurt, it's a major deal and then he gets the reins for the year. But what's, what, what the funny thing is, you know, you think about Cincinnati. Cincinnati's probably going to move on from Andy Dalton. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cincinnati's probably going to draft their quarterback of the future mm -hmm. this year. Yep. So Teddy Bridgewater would Could be a great intermediate guy, but then he's thrust in the same situation again because if they pick that guy with a top three pick, at some point in time during yeah, next year, gonna they're going to want him on the field, mm -hmm. okay? So I kind of feel for Teddy because he's just in that unenviable position where he may never, even though he believes he's a starter, and I believe he's a starting quarterback in this league based upon some of the garbage that I've seen, he may never, ever get back to a point where he's a starter, never again. So I, I'd love him in Miami. Yeah. Look, I'd I think we can him. agree. Backup quarterback is a position of need for this team. Uh, McCown probably not coming back. Sudfeld's a free agent. You don't know if you want to bring him back, but backup quarterback is a need. If you're looking towards the draft, what other needs does this team need uh -huh. right now? Where, yeah, funny, where would you like us to funny, start? <laughs> funny, funny you should ask because you know I put put this together. I thought last night together. during, I thought last night during um, doing our post game show that we kind of get to you know what the what 2020 in the off season would look like. You know, on the offensive side of the ball, um, you need offensive line depth. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the top of your board? Well, I'm on the offensive side, but that's not the top. I oh, just, I just I'm thinking by they're not in okay. order. Okay. They're not right. in order. They need offensive line depth. Um, and they need to go and find some offensive linemen. They got some dog in them. I'm tired of these nice guys. I'm tired of, you know, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of these Samoan guys that want to wear their lay and, and play <laughs> and play their ukulele and sing oh, man. and sing and that dance. Was a dig. Okay, Ooh. I want to see them. I want to see them draft some guys like Nelson from the Colts. They just want to eat your oh, lunch. Oh, Richie Incognito. And, oh, Richie Incognito. <laughs> they just they just want to eat your Brilliant. lunch and they want to. They're gonna block you beyond beyond the whistle. Mm -hmm. You know, this this just gonna they're gonna finish the play because when I look at our offensive line, Soft. that's what I see. I see running backs that are getting tackled and linemen are standing around watching. I see quarterbacks scrambling for his life, trying to make it happen, and I see guys standing around watching, okay? The referee's got a whistle in his mouth for a damn reason. The, the whistle tells you when to stop playing. I want some guys that, on this offensive line that are going to play beyond that. They need some dogs on the offensive line, okay? And they need to go draft some. Not these guys that want to just – you know, want to want to <laughs> play the ukulele and dance. I'm sorry, that's just how I personally Dang, feel. Some balls. The Amalu? the wide receiver core, the wide receiver core needs to be overhauled. Yes. I think I think you're we good agree. with Greg Ward Jr. Yep. I think he's going to be your slot corner next year. Should. I think they need to go ahead and write Alshon Jeffries a check. 
and tell them peace. <laughs> I'll see you when I see you, unless I see you first, okay? <laughs> then I think they need to go out and you, you need to get another veteran. Go ahead, bring Deshaun back, but then get in the draft and get active Speed, on, yeah. get active in the draft and go and get two more guys in the draft, okay? Then the last thing on offense, they got to figure out what they're going to do with Jordan Howard. I yep. think you're pretty much set with uh, Miles Sanders. I think he's going to be special, by the way. Yeah. That move he made yesterday, I was like, my gosh. Uh, Chris you know? Collinsworth called it the moonwalk. Yeah. He backpedaled. So <laughs> I think between he and Boston Scott, you got a good tandem. But I think that Jordan Howard gives you, you know, the power back that you need. He gives you, you know, the four-minute running back that you need. I don't think either Miles or or um, Boston is that guy, and if you can get him at the right at the right number, I say you re-sign him and we you agree. bring bring him back. We agree. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, um, they need all play, three levels. They, they, yeah, they, they they need they need playmakers. Okay. Um, on the front, for a team that's front centric, meaning that. Jim Schwartz expects for the front the majority of the time to create the pressure. You only got one Hellraiser on that side of the ball, and that's Fletcher Cobb. Uh, I think Graham, he's just not consistent, but he's, he's been solid but this year. But that's my, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the difference, when, when you say solid, what's solid? Now, granted, he's got nine and a half sacks. Right, he's had a very good year. Four of them came in the Giants game. Okay. See, no, you can't do that. You play who you yeah, play. I can. You said. Yeah, I can. Uh, you can't make that you play who you I'm play. I'm just saying, four of them came. Okay, four of them came in one game. Okay. Okay? So if you're playing against a weaker opponent, you get four sacks in one game, you know what? Hey, good for you. Okay? So that means that the, the other 15 games, the other 15 games, you average a half a sack a game pretty much. Okay? Who else has nine and a half? For, for a second. I'm not even talking about that. My point is, my point is, you know, you have to be more consistent. Okay. You know, I'm looking at Derek Barnett. They whiffed on him. Bad mistake. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because you can't take a guy that's 6'2", 6'3", 265 pounds and put him, line him up at right defensive end against everybody's best, everybody's best left tackle. You know, a grown man playing against a young boy. Every once in a while, you know, he'll dip the shoulder, he'll contort, he'll get around the end, and he'll make the play. But that's like once every two games. That's mm -hmm. not enough for a guy that you wasted, that you put a first-round first draft pick on. on. They need to go and get a bona fide pass rusher, a guy that is 6'5", 6'6", 275 to 285 pounds Three names with on long, the top of the list. With long right gorilla now. arms yeah. that can go and get it. You know, when you play against the Eagles, they don't have a pass rusher that you fear other than Fletcher Cox. Agree. And he ain't enough. He's not enough. No. They've got to upgrade that position. So let's and spend that, the money. If, if that means that, you know, some guys on that line has got to go, then they got to go. But mediocrity is not enough. You got to have. Well, you get Malik Jackson back next year. Yeah, you get him back. But, I mean, still. Still. Then, then you go on to, you know, the secondary. You need speed, depth. And, and, and you need to change. You need to change the secondary coach. I'm sorry. I, I had enough of Corey Underland. He's proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that he cannot develop these young guys. You need to go get someone who will hold these guys accountable, fix the mistakes to ensure that the mistakes don't happen from week to week, over and over and over again. You know, and a guy who can pour into you know these young guys and teach them how to play the game the proper way. And the last, last but least, is the linebacker position. Seth, okay. the Eagles have that's, a contract for you. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a contract for that, you. That's my position, okay? And in today's NFL, most teams are 4-2 defense. That means they got four down linemen and two, two linebackers. linebackers. So when you limit yourself to two linebackers on the field because, of, because the personnel group is dictated, that means that those two guys that play monsters. linebacker, they got to be monsters. They Vander got Esch to be Jalen Smith hell raisers. Monsters. They got to be uber aggressive, you know? And I don't see that. No. Nigel Bradham, too slow. Bye. Too slow to react, too slow to run. I mean, they got absolutely nothing out of him this year. He stole $8 million. <laughs> Nothing out of him this year. The Nate Gary project was good. He's okay. Okay. I think he's a nickel linebacker mm -hmm. at best. Terrible against the run. Yep. 
one of the worst tackling linebackers I've ever seen, you know, <laughs> so you you got to upgrade, you know, and come Hill. No, don't like well, him. Well, I like him, but you know, he got to get his he got to get his brain together and get back 100% healthy. So and, and my whole point is, you know, the Eagles, when you look at them across the board, they don't have playmakers. That's the first thing you got to go out and you got to get you got to get playmakers on both sides of the ball. Two players on defense is not enough. Somebody's got they got to get some more playmakers at every level. level on the defense on the offensive side of the ball. You know, my biggest thing is. And this applies to the defensive side of the ball as well. It's OK organizationally for you to want to do the right thing that you want high character guys mm -hmm. that you want stand up in the community guys. Mm -hmm. OK. But at some point in time. You got to go and get you some of them bad boys. Yeah. OK, you need some dogs mm -hmm. on both sides of the ball. You need some dog, some some guys is perfect. You, you need <laughs> you need some guys that when that guy walk into the building, you lock up the women and children. <laughs> Vontae is okay. perfect. You need some of those guys. Have Batman Jones. Listen, football, football is a football is a violent game, man. There ain't nothing nice about this game. Oh. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't want no choir boys on my team. So you think okay? that's who they should go? Why don't they go sign them in off season? I don't, listen, you saying that I that's what they should be allowed to you, play? You you <laughs> saying that that's what they should they do? They be out there. My point is, my point is, he's a classic point because I was talking to somebody about him this morning. I said, you know what? The Eagles, as bad as they needed receiver help, okay, you need to go sign that guy. I know he's a basket case, but you go oh. sign him because he's going to make your offense better right now, okay? And then you go hire a psychiatrist This 100%, 100% of the time on staff Follows with him around. that goes with him everywhere he goes, and you make sure that he takes that Prozac or whatever the hell he is that he ain't taking when he be tripping, but you go get that guy, man. You have to do that. You need some dogs on this team. The Eagles got too many choir boys. You need some dogs. I mean, look, the guys that I played with, man. I'm about to say, who were the bad guys you played with? Listen, man, <laughs> we was all bad. Oh, there That's is. why, and listen, Reggie wasn't bad. I'm about to say, Reggie okay? wasn't bad. Re Reggie wasn't bad. But listen, the rest of us, we had problems, man. We had problems. Keep it and, and you and you and you know you know where we expressed our problems on the, the greatest field. every on the Sunday. Field. <laughs> and you got to go get some of those guys, man. If you're going to be Andy Reid don't have no problem with it. The only reason he got rid of Kareem Hunt because it was media driven. He had to. Yeah. OK, but go back and look at some of the guys that he's got on his Tariq roster. Hill. Look at some of the players that they go out and they pick up yeah. some of the problem players, a, a, a Tyron Matthew, yep. you know, because you know what he knows. He you got to have some dogs in order to win. And when I look at it, and when I look at this roster, man, when I look at what they have and what they need, they ain't got enough dogs. Nice they, guys now, they, they got some guys that's barking, okay? But the question is, are they chihuahuas or are they pit bulls? <laughs> well, that's a look at what the Eagles need in 2020. Real quick, we're going to go around the NFL postseason, but first, this word from Parks. What a night. The new Parks Casino $10 million sports book changes everything. It's a whole new ball game at Parks Casino. Watch every single game and sporting event you want on our custom built 154 foot wide, $1.5 million screen, capable of showing 36 events at once. Bet all the hot action and enjoy tap after tap of amazing craft beer, cocktails, and pub food favorites. Your entire game day destination is here for you and your friends. Sports book, beer garden, and Liberty Bell Gastro Pub. Parks Casino, bet with the best. So we've hit the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. We certainly had some upsets on wild card weekend, but now we get to see the top two seeds in each conference in action, hosting games on the divisional round of the playoffs. So ET, I'll start with you. Who do we like now moving forward when we've seen the upsets in wild card weekend? Do we still tend to go towards the favorites in the NFC and the AFC? Or is there somebody at a wild card weekend that you can see giving some fits? My, my picks didn't change. I said Baltimore and Green Bay in the Super Bowl. My picks are still Baltimore and Green Bay in the Super Bowl. That's not changed. I didn't have the New England Cheatriots getting out of the second <laughs> round, no matter who they played. And honestly, as much as I like Minnesota or New Orleans, I, I didn't like either one of them going in the Lambeau to win. So, I mean, my, my position has been the same. I, I think that those will be the two teams you'll see in the Super Bowl. I had the Saints going and, and, and really doing some damage. And full disclosure, I did have the Eagles losing to the Seahawks. 
but I also had the Seahawks upsetting the 49ers because those two teams played two incredible right. games this year. Right. And then I figured the Seahawks, if they win, excuse me, if the Saints win in Lambeau, the Saints would be hosting the NFC title mm. game against the Seahawks. But that didn't happen. The Saints were upset by Minnesota. They lost on walk-off plays. Three, Three straight, straight years. Three postseasons. Terrible. Losing on the final play of the Terrible. game. That is heartbreaking uh, for the New Orleans Saints. But Seth, you look at who's left in the playoffs, where do we lean? I think that Seattle's a fraud. Okay. I think, I think they got out of here yesterday by the skin of their behind. Fair. They probably thought the same I, thing I, coming I, in here. I think that, you know, um, they they go to they go to to Lambo. Uh, to Lambo. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm not a hundred percent sold on everything that surrounds Aaron Rodgers, but I'm gonna give Green Bay the nod. But I don't think anybody in the NFC is going to beat um, the 49ers at home with home field. Yeah. And I think what's going to wind up happening is you're going to get a, um, we don't even talk about the AFC because nobody's beating Baltimore. Nobody's beating Baltimore. You know, I I think you're going to get a San Francisco slash um, 49ers, uh, San Francisco slash Baltimore Super Bowl. Which we've seen before. And as good as Lamar Jackson has been, as good as that offense has been, as prolific as that offense has been all year, no one has really talked about or given a lot of credence to what they've done on the defensive side of the ball. <laughs> Them boys. They can be overwhelming mm-hmm. when they play. Especially with Charles. That is, that is a defense that's got some dogs. And I think, you know, when you pit that defense against a Jimmy Garoppolo under pressure circumstances with their ability to control the line of scrimmage and the run game. Um, I don't think there's anybody that's going to beat the Baltimore Ravens across the board. I think that they're going to be, you know, the 2020 Super Bowl 54 champions this year. That's my prediction. Lamar Jackson, an MVP and a Lombardi trophy, and maybe a Super Bowl MVP. What a year. Should get it off. It's been a year, man. Listen to that. What are are two years? A Heisman? Yeah. Yeah. And and what that goes to show you is that the the way people view the NFL. And and what's crazy, I'll bring this up as the uh, college football resident expert on this panel. Lamar's numbers the year after he won the Heisman, which was, I guess, Baker's Heisman trophy. Lamar's numbers were better than the year he actually won the Heisman trophy. (laughs) So so (laughs) incredible. I'll go to I will say this is that, you know, they've done everything they could to um, to de-emphasize how good this kid really is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how can your numbers? I know the wins and losses from that year that he won to the second year wasn't as great. but if his numbers are just as good, you know, how do you how are you so out of the picture as far as, you know, the trophy is as a repeat? Yeah, he Heisman. literally could have won back to back Heisman's and no one would no one would have said it. Absolutely. So then he goes into the draft process and you've got these gurus that's supposed to, you know, really understand football and know how the game of football works and they're supposed to be these talent evaluators and whatnot that say, Oh, he should move to um, you know, wide receiver and last year he played like he probably should have been a wide receiver but tell me what rookie quarterback doesn't do so mm-hmm. you know and then you get all these people that come out of the woodworks oh i told you so specifically a bill poland who just won't eat crow and just say you know what i was wrong yeah you know he he and two of his henchmen that he got in his pockets are the only two that um that wouldn't unanimously make um lamar jackson an all pro and they put it out there for the whole world to know and to see. Okay? How hypocritical is that? Admit that you are wrong and give this give this kid, you know, his, his props. Because the NFL, and to your point, the NFL as we know it is changing before our very eyes. You know, mm-hmm. defenders are so fast and defenses can be so complicated from the standpoint of where they can bring pressure and how they can bring bring pressure that the pocket quarterback that Bill Polian knows, the Jim Kelly that he brought into, you know, Buffalo and, you know, and what they did, the Peyton Manning, mm-hmm. the Tom Brady, you know, the Troy Aikman, those guys are dying on the vine mm-hmm. every single year mm-hmm. from this point moving forward. We're talking about five to ten years till we get to a place and maybe even shorter on the ten side. We get into a place where those guys aren't even going to be able to 
to play in this modern day NFL. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't move, if you can't move the pocket, if you can't scramble for a first down, if you can't sc scramble, if you can't move to prolong a play, then what's going to wind up happening is you're going to be obsolete. You're going to be like a dinosaur. A dying breed is what they are. And you know the, the guys who sit back and continue to, to push against that, you know, the only thing they're doing is they're holding up progress. And it's really showing where they are and what their mindset is and how they don't want that one position yeah. to change for whatever reason mm -hmm. it is. Because, and, you know, they got, there's a lot of kids out there, you know, that are playing the game at a different level, seven on seven, you know, at the high school and youth level, that by the time they get to college, they are so far ahead, you know, that those are going to be the quarterbacks of the future in the NFL. And you know what? Change is coming. And those old dinosaurs that used to run the establishment, mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to stop it, well, you know, if you don't because they're going to be like Bear Bryant after he lost to, um, I believe, I, I want to say, I'm trying to think, after he lost to Oklahoma, you know, he didn't have any African-American players on his team, you know, and after they came down there with running backs and wide receivers, you know, and DBs, I mean, they stomped the mud hole in Alabama. And after the game, he said, I need to go get me some of those. <laughs> well, whether it's Lamar Jackson or even in the mold of a guy like Josh Allen, you know, if you don't have a mobile quarterback now, uh, odds are you're not getting things done. Tom Brady's sitting back there ducking down. Eli Manning's gone. And the, hey, it's, now, a, listen, it's a new got, era. It's a if, new if era you, of quarterback. If, if you got five all pros across the board, yeah. you know, that, that can, that can they can protect the pocket quarterback. You know, can Tom Brady still play? Yeah, but he's got to have mm. he's got to have the right offensive line. Yeah, you know. I heard Tom Brady to San Diego might happen. Philip Rivers to Indy and Tom Brady to San Diego, which would be <laughs> weird in its own right I, to see I both of those I, changes. I, can't but see that, but I just can't see Tom no. Brady in any other uniform but a Patriots uniform. I mean, I know that. Hey, you know, can he go out there and get thirty million? Probably. You know, is it really about the money? Nah. Is that really what no. he wants to be? His wife makes more than him. He's I mean, his, his legacy his legacy is really. He's not about to learn a new system. He's not about to yeah. learn. And, new, and new his, leg, his legacy is in, is in New England. He's I mean, got a it, freaking TB12 office it'd in be Foxborough. A shame. It'd, be a shame. it'd be a shame to see that guy, you know, in any other uniform other than a Patriots uniform. And, and finally, we know it's a transitional year for the division. The Eagles, they are, you know, stable. Whereas Mike McCarthy is now going to be the head coach in Dallas. Ron Rivera is the new head coach in Washington. And the Giants are looking for a head coach as well. Uh, expected to be Matt Rule of Baylor. Um, but we'll wait and see what happens. Uh, Don't do it. Uh, with Don't that. do it, gentlemen. <laughs> Don't go to the college ranks. Get you hey, a guy that's uh, proven. Yeah, you know what? I, it, Matt Rule has his, his trajectory. Since but, I, but I will tell you this, though. I've spoken to people that are involved in coaching search, search they work. They say he's good. And... He not only checks off boxes, but he blows people away in the interviews. He w he would have had that Colts job. He turned it he turned it down the year that Josh McDaniels took the job and then turned it down. Matt Rule turned down that job. He was uncertain about Andrew Luck. Didn't want that. Okay. He turned down the Jets last year because the Jets wanted him to have uh, their offensive coordinator, and he wanted to hire his own people. Matt Rule is a guy that in coaching circles has a lot of respect. He is a leader of men, he well and he that. knows he is a CEO, which is most important, that teams want CEOs at the head coach position. Sometimes it ain't completely about that. And he that. does have NFL experience. Was so, on the Giants staff in 2012, worked under Tom Coughlin. I get is familiar you. with Dave Gettleman, who was also on that Giants staff in 2012. I don't know if that's going to be the hire, but that's the favorite right Sometimes now. Sometimes it ain't 100% about that. Yeah. My thing is, you know, not wanting to, one, to have the scenario be the perfect thing, I was, you know, reading about, you know, the Mike McCarthy hire and, you know, the Cowboys have still got some some offensive coaches that are still under contract. OK, you're not going to be able to wipe those guys off the slate because Jerry's not going to fire guys and have to pay 10 coaches out on the street, you know, and then bring in a whole new staff of, you know, s staff guys who come in and you got to pay them, too. So Mike McCarthy is going to be forced at least year one to eat some of these guys that are already on the staff. So to go to Matt Rule's point, you know, that's going to be the case wherever he goes. There's always going to be some guys that are under contract that the organization deems that were good coaches mm -hmm. under, a, under a bad head coach or a bad 
you know, set of set, Kevin set, Stefanski's set, been with the set, Vikings set, since 2006. Set, set of coordinators. I worked on Brad Childress's staff. Yeah. And now he's with Mike Zimmer. But so the, but it the, does happen. But the point is, if he wants a job, you're going to have to do what you got to do. I yeah. mean, I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of going to the college ranks to be able to get coaches. I, I just, I, I, I think that there's too many guys that have languished within the league and too many guys um, who have, um, who played in the league, guys that have coached for 10, 15 years in the league that have waited for an opportunity to move up the chain. And I think it's a complete slap in the face when those guys don't get, a, get an opportunity, mm -hmm. yet you go to the college ranks and pull a guy in and bring him to the NFL to do that same job. Good I point. just think it's, I, I think it's wrong. That's fair, that's fair. Well, before we get out of here, uh, we want to take a special uh, moment to thank each and every single one of you. You guys have helped make this show possible. Absolutely. Uh, we thank you for all of your support. We definitely want to thank our sponsors that we've had throughout the year, namely Kingsmark, our primary sponsor, as well as Vuliware and some of the other ones that we've had along the way. Uh, so for all of us here at My New Philly, make sure you guys check us out next season where we'll have more hot takes, more guests, and make sure you watch us on the My New Philly Network where something's always new and, and everything, everything is always Philly. Philly.